All right, I'm Jason Whitlock. That's Marcellus Wiley. That dude? Yes, sir. All right, welcome to Speak for Yourself, the most fearless show in sports. Coming up, we'll tell you if Ezekiel Elliott just lost some major leverage in his contract negotiations. And one hour from now, we'll tell you if we just got proof LeBron's agent, Rich Paul, if he tried to sabotage the Clippers. Mm -hmm. to start in the NFL. Mm -hmm. All right, for much of this week, I've been arguing with and debating Marcella, Sean Merriman, and TJ Huspenzada over how the NFL Players Union should respond and exploit ownership's desire to expand the league's schedule to 18 games. Today, I want to establish a goal for the players in their collective bargaining negotiations. Points on the package. If you're a fan of the greatest TV show in the history of television, The Wire, then you remember Baltimore Kingpin Avon Barksdale opening up a new territory and offering his young soldiers, Stinkum, points on the package. Stinkum received a percentage of sales. NFL players get 47% of the league's defined revenue. They get 47 points on the package. DeMarie Smith, head of the Players Union, should use the desire for 18 games to increase the players' points on the package to 50%. That would be an incredible financial windfall from a league that generates $15 billion a year and would likely generate an additional two to three billion with an 18 game schedule. An article in The Athletic written by former Ivy League NFL player Ross Tucker mm -hmm. estimated that the 18 game schedule under the current 47% split would add as much as $700,000 to the average player's yearly salary. You add two, three, or four points to the package and that 700,000 could climb to one million rather quickly. NFL players love to talk about guaranteed contracts. The mainstream media have convinced football players the lack of guaranteed contracts is the NFL's biggest current crime. The truth is, it's the NFL's greatest strength. It's one of several reasons the NFL is superior to Major League Baseball and the NBA. You can discard underperforming players. No, the NFL's crime is that its players receive less points on the package than baseball and basketball players. Football is America's most popular sport by a mile. The players power a league that generates twice as much money as MLB and the NBA. NFL players have shorter careers. The goal should be to make as much money as soon as possible. Baseball players can earn as much as 52% of revenue. Basketball players earn 50%. <clears throat> NFL players get 47 or 48 points on the package. The best workers in sports have the worst points on the package deal. That is criminal. Yesterday, shortly after this show concluded, Pro Football Talk's Mike Florio published a story defending DeMarie Smith. The story stated that criticism of Smith is mostly unfair. Florio wrote, one thing the NFLP definitely has done incredibly well, it has created a clear impression that it is vehemently opposed to expanding the regular season. Neither Florio nor Smith understand leadership. It's not in defining what you are against, it's in boldly defining what you are for. Positive, proactive leadership is far more effective than negative, reactive leadership. Florio's article concludes that Smith is waiting on the NFL to make the players an offer they can't refuse. Well, closed mouth can't get fed. Mm. Scared money don't make money. Mm. NFL owners and their television partners want 18 games? I say no problem. Football players, we want more points on the package than basketball and baseball players. We want half of this money. Hey. Football players have earned it. They're the best in the business. They're the biggest TV stars we've ever seen. The NFL PA should tell ownership to put three or four more points on the package and the players will be more than happy to play 18 games. All right, joining the desk now, our Fox Sports NFL analyst, Sean Merriman, and TJ Husmanzada. Marcellus, of course, we'll start with you. Mm. What do you think of my proposal? Points on the package should be the goal. <laughs> 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 wow. Uh, you What's are. package, baby. This dude, <laughs> chill out. <laughs> uh, you sure are quick on the trigger, man. It, it's amazing. I, I don't agree with your package. Uh, I don't like your package because on Monday, uh, you were too quick on the trigger saying, hey, players, jump on this, this opportunity. You can't let this go by. And now we're here on Wednesday and you're saying, let's put some terms to this opportunity, to this idea. But what you don't do 
is set the market. What you don't do is react to a headline, not to a proposal. So I don't like your terms because why limit myself? Why not go up to 51%? Right now we're in fluctuation between 47 and 48 and a half percent in terms of the split with the owners. Hmm. Why say that we can't go 50 plus and then see what happens? But you know how I'll know when it's time to respond to the proposal as they are having their meetings today, tomorrow, and Friday about the CBA? Pressure. Pressure creates leverage. Pressure from the TV networks. Hey, NFL, how's that looking? Uh-oh, -uh, we'll get back to you. Uh, pressure from the fan base. How's this going to work? 16 games, 18 games, I pay it for two games. No Tom Brady, boo. And then pressure from the players, which is that awkward silence of y'all figure this out yet? And when they calculate all that external pressure from its fan base and from those networks, they'll come to the NFLPA with something I think that's even grander with your proposal, proposing. So therefore, I just pause until I see something hard on the table. I like it. I like this proposal. We, we talked about the other day of uh, DeMora Smith coming to the table or the NFL coming to the table without a definitive plan, right? Mm -hmm. 16 games, the guy's gonna sit out. How do we divide this money up? If you do 50-50, it's an easy situation. There's no fine print and read. There's no where this money going to go. Okay, let's come. The NFL, come to the table. Okay, you guys got 50%. Do whatever you want with it. If you want to play your guy 16 games, play him 16 games. You want to play him 18, but we're going to come to the table with a definitive plan and say, you guys figure it out. That's a plan that the NFL it can easily come to DeMora Smith and NFL PA and simplify, because I like, I like simplicity. Let's go sit down. You guys have 50%. You find out what to do with it. You want to play 16 games. If the fans are mad because the, the, your starter's not playing, that's on you guys. But we're going to give you 50%. Well, when we played, we got 50%. Thank you. And, and so that, that was the norm for us. Now it's in not this, the norm now. In the new CBA, that, and that's why the owners are so happy, because it was dropped down to 47 to 48.5%. Now, me, 50% is the minimum we get. And it, it can't just be... The problem is what the players have always worried about, and you're going to say that's what it should be, is about the money. We're going to get 50%, and there has to be one thing that means something to the players that they get as well, whether it's medical insurance, mm. whether it's a partial guarantee on your contract. I mean, if you sign a six-year deal, the first four years should be guaranteed regardless. If you sign a four-year deal, all four years should be guaranteed. Those things are going to matter to the players. It's not about, oh, we get 50%, that's $750,000 more per year. What else do we get outside of that? Because as of what you say, if it's the pressure and they really want this, then they're going to give in. Look, I, I, what I'm arguing is there's an opportunity for negotiation and I think major upside for NFL I'm cutting players. you off. You need to get put on retainer, too, with the PA. You got some <laughs> great points. You need to put you on but, a retainer. But, but, again, and that's what I'm saying. There's a chance to make an argument to the public that the public will be on your side because I just don't, you're, you're not going to get the public and our ownership on your side about guaranteed contracts. Never. But I think you can get them on, hey man, the NBA and Major League Baseball players are getting more of a cut of yeah. the money than we are. You can win that argument. And so whether you get to 50% in year one of the agreement and 50.5 in year two and 51 the next year, those, to me, are reasonable goals and what you should be looking for. And again, rather than defining what you're against, I'm, what are you for? And what you're really for, I want more of this money because we've earned it. We're the best at driving television ratings. We need to be treated like, okay, y'all don't want to give us guaranteed contract, but just give us more of that money so we can make more money sooner. That, to me, should be the goal. It's concrete, but I still think it's premature. One, you're negotiating against yourself in terms of setting the market. But two, you always perceive the negotiations with your first offer as your high. Think about it. In any negotiation, when you come in with a number, that's the ceiling, brother. So now we come in now, we're going to now negotiate down to a different place. That's why I don't like this. Because if we start at 50, we're going to end up somewhere where I we know, go. But Marcellus, when I started talking about what your goal is, mm -hmm. I'm not saying what you're negotiating. That's not what we point. come okay. in at. Yeah. Again, so y'all might sit around as a group in private, say, you know what our number is, 50. And so he's going to yeah. argue in the public, we want 52. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we, that's what Major League Baseball has. Why can't we get it? Our careers are shorter. We're taking more risks. We're driving more uh, television ratings. We're the best at this. And y'all, I'm telling you, that's an argument I think all fans will be like. Okay, you responded that. to my second layer, my, my, my first layer. Why would you set 
the market first. How come you don't wait well, for the well, NFL? Maybe, well, I'm maybe, having a private conversation amongst football players. Oh, they, but they, I'm NFL's not the D. Marie Smith. Was the NFL's idea private? No. It's already out there. So why is... But the, the NFL already... They already know. These, these owners have been doing it for so long. They already know what they will and won't do. 100%. They already know what they're willing to get. Before they come to the, come to the table... You're saying... And I, we talked yesterday about negotiating against yourself. The owners are already... They already know what they will and won't do. And I agree with TJ. Like, if you're going to come into the table, come with the 50%, right? Because that's your, that's your starting point or your ceiling, whatever you want to say it. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna bend a little bit more. Now we're gonna give the first four years guaranteed in healthcare. Now, if that happens, D. Mar D Marie Smith looks like the bad guy. If the NFL comes in and says we're gonna give you fifty percent, that's the, the start negotiation point. Now, in the middle or towards the end of that negotiation point, we'll give you uh, health care and we'll give you four years guaranteed. Once that hits the public and the NFL PA doesn't agree to that, the NFL and DeMaurice Smith look like the bad guys. So if you come in there with the 50 percent guaranteed and mm -hmm. negotiate from there, the NFL already knows what they will and know what they will and won't give up. Out of sequence. Well, it's out of sequence. One, leverage. The NFL owners know what they're going to do because they have leverage. This is a prime opportunity and a rare opportunity where the PA can have leverage. So sitting back and waiting is allowing them to have leverage. Two, to steal what you just said, the NFL right now in this proposal doesn't know which way is up. Let's just be real. They have not connected all the dots. They have not made this situation where they know how the 18 and 16 game is going to land with his public and with his players. Marcellus, so just I, they don't have to have it figured out for one. Right. And two, and long as the not, money's there. Right. And two, mm. they're not going to get beat up for coming with a proposal that calls for more games without having player input. They can only be figured out together to make it work in the public where they won't get beat up. And then the other thing, Marcellus, is there's no one that owns an NFL team or anyone that's a lawyer representing the NFLPA who doesn't already know there's one goal line here. And the goal line is what percentage of revenue are the players going to get? Yeah. <clears throat> that's all given. So it's an argument about where we're going to land on this number. And I'm saying use this 18-game deal to come up with an argument that gets you to the goal line or maybe even past the goal line to 51% or whatever. But the argument mm. is about what percentage of revenue it does. That, that argument's been going on for decades. Okay, and I respect that, but what we, I don't want to get caught up in semantics. We are agreeing that we're going to call this play. But see, you remind me of when I was a young player and I had a best move, and I said, I know this is going to work. And I went out there and did it too early. And then I realized, I got to set you up, brother, as a tackle. I can't use my, my best move too early. So guess what I'm saying? Let's call that play. Let's use that move. But know when to use it in sequence. And I just think right now, they just had their first meeting about the CBA today. I don't think day one, you sit there and say, here are our terms. Well, I well, want to see you get But see, both, both sides know. The owners know. We're only going this far. Right. And DeMar Smith and the NFLPA know. This is where we want to get. They both know how far each will bend. It's just, to me, being... I, I was a rep for seven years, so I've been in these meetings. I know what goes on. It's... The big thing is, is the, the money's going to come. It's the benefits that come with it yeah. is what guys are worried about. And so the 50%, whatever it may be, that's going to come. It's everything else that matters that the, the public doesn't really care about. All they see, oh, the players got X amount percent or the owners. It's the other Let's things the as well. I, I, I'm going to say this. Mm. If you look at what everybody has said from Roger Goodell on the NFL side to the – they're trying to get a deal done before the start of this season. <laughs> And to me, that screams... They don't have a lot of time. That want, this screams that, but and it also... inspiration. Yeah, it does, because it's like, <laughs> there's this pot of gold out here that the TV networks have for us yeah. right now. If, and so we need to be putting these things into place so we can strike. If we, if we don't get this deal done and it goes all the way into next year, the pot of gold might not be as big. We, we just don't know. So I, I'm t there's not a lot of time. And look, you're arguing about... 49%, 50%, 51%. Ah, but we're like, that's what got them in trouble last time. You know why the players conceded down to 47 to 48.5%? Because the NFL owners convinced them that you can take less of more. The game is growing, just take a little less percentage. And the players say, 
you know what? Y'all got us. We, we've been locked out for four months. Okay. Now, I'm saying right now, you got the NFL where you want them because they are getting pressure from other billionaires, not from players who need a check, from TV networks. Like, we give y'all money. So just wait. They're going to cave. But again, Mar Marcellus, you're making my point. Mm. They settled for less last time. Of more. My argument is, don't be a fool again. D. D Marie Smith talked y'all into some dumb stuff. Don't be a fool again. Don't, <laughs> don't get caught up in guaranteed. Don't get caught up in guaranteed contracts, and don't get caught up in oh, we'll never play 18 games under any circumstances. The hell you won't. Oh, if would. there's enough yeah, money, I, mean, I would too. Yeah, I would get. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. He so he's not representing the voice of the players mm. because the voice of the players. Oh yeah, we will he, for the right price. I'm. He's representing that, the power of the players. That, that's what it, yeah, the that's what it is. The power, not the voice right now. It's about the power. There are billionaires yelling at billionaires. I'm going to let them fight that out, Whitlock. Then I'm going to jump in. That's what you're supposed to do in sequence. Again, Marcel's word, I think you may be reading it. Those billionaire TV networks and billionaire owners, they've had their fight. They're ready to pounce. Mm -hmm. want to expand the schedule and we'll spend more money. And the players better make damn sure they get theirs and not be worried about guaranteed contracts and some idiot leader that's talking about under no circumstance will we play mm. 18. Will I? Will I? Will he's I? spending somebody else's the, money. Did you hear the end of that argument between the billionaires? Because what they said, now go get those players. He said, right. go get the players. No, that's what it comes down to. My dead body. I'm going to tell you the other Smart. thing about why Dean Marie Smith is out of line here. What do you think the agents are saying? Wait. You think the agents are sitting there like, oh, no, we won't play 18 games. Are you kidding me? Do agents jump at the first proposal? No. It's, you know why? It's not about jumping at the first proposal. I, it's I, about I, making I, I the most just, of this opportunity. I think you just opportunity. caught up because of what he said, what DeMarie said. There's still an opportunity for both sides to win. It's just it's the, DeMarie it's, Smith it's lost fact, last time. It's just He'll lose again. He'll lose twice. That. That's all. <laughs> He'll lose twice. He'll lose again. Whitlock and Wiley, TJ Hushmanzada and Sean Merriman are back. Time now for a big story. Let's move to Dallas, where Ezekiel Elliott's push for a new contract might have just taken a big hit. According to TMZ, Elliott is now under investigation for an incident in Las Vegas back in May where he knocked over a security guard who has now decided to press charges. Roderick Gazelle decided not to suspend Zeke over the incident, but the news comes at a bad time for the running back who is reportedly considering a holdout to get a new deal with the Cowboys. All right, the question here is, will this significantly hurt Zeke's contract leverage with the Cowboys? And I, I think yes. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, it's a rule of thumb in any negotiation. If it doesn't help you, it hurts you. Just think about it. When you were up for those contracts and your agent called you back, you said, so what are they saying? And they would throw all the mud and shade that they could. Makes you mad. And yeah. you're like, wait a minute. Coach smiled at me yesterday, but this is what he really thinks. And they use everything to either demerit you to get balance in the negotiation. So if you're the Dallas Cowboys who had to hire a watch team for Dez Bryant and have to spend so many resources to now Ezekiel Elliott, you got to use that against him. So I think in the long run, it does undermine his value because they're investing in not just your talent that got you there, but your character that will keep you there. A long-term investment is into your character as much as it's your production. And he right now has question marks. You know, teams are terrified to pay guys when you consistently get in trouble off the field. You know, they'll get over once or twice. It's, you're growing up, you, you're in the public eye, you're trying to grow up as a pro, you're trying to grow up as a man, and you, they'll give you a slap on the wrist and say, okay, he's just growing up, that's just part of it. Three, four, and five times, they're going to use that against you in, no, in negotiation. Everything is always fine the first three or four years when, when you're in the organization. You find practices, everybody's cool, but let those contract negotiations start to happen. Mm. They won't talk to you as much. It get a little colder in that building. Little things that start popping up here and there. Oh, yeah, he was out. He don't care about football. You're like, what? I, I'm the first guy in here. But it's, mm. it's all a part of it of lowering the value of your contract. This is what's happening right here with Zeke. This is a terrible time for him to be knocking on the door of Jerry Jones saying, I want some more money. So if he is planning on holding out right now after, you know, the new investigation, which is going to be the quickest investigation we've ever seen because all of it was on camera. <laughs> uh, but if he's asking for it right now, this is the worst possible time for him to be asking for a new contract. It's not this incident. It, it's all it's the incidents like the, leading up to yeah. this. In, I mean, this incident, like Kyle Johnson, like for real, bro, you a Juco football player. Coach need to kick him off the team. <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> like, uh, all yeah. of, like, what, what, really? He came chest to chest with you and you fall. That's not a big deal. It's everything that has led up to this before this with Ezekiel. Now, 
he shouldn't be asking for a contract right now. He, does he deserve it? Yes. Once you get in trouble with this incident, you got to wait another year, bro. You got to... Yeah, let them, nothing, you got to walk happening. a clean slate yeah. for a whole year yep. because this is... You've been in trouble every year you've been in the league. Every offseason, mm. you've had something pop up. Yeah, Merriman said three, four, five times. Actually, six. And, and that's, then, that's the problem. Yeah. Six times I in three counting, years? Man, and see, this hand. is the thing, though. When you're on your rookie contract and you're balling, they got your back. Yeah. As soon as you start asking for money, it's, bro, you got all these incidents. We can't invest this in you. I, I'm going to defend Kyle Johnson slightly, the junior college football oh, player. Oh, Lord, Again, oh, I'm man. just slightly, because it, it is a weak look. Nothing happened. He wasn't injured. What are you going to – but the, w is he supposed to fight? When Ezekiel Elliott walks up on you like that and, and is getting in your face, your normal instincts are to fight. This little skinny uh, white dude smartly figures out, oh, I can't whoop Zeke. So w w what am I supposed to do? You know where he can whoop him? In the court of law. Zeke was mm. look, pushing the button for a fight. This guy's going to take him to court and embarrass yeah, him. You know why I push back on that? And I understand what you're saying in principle, but I can't execute it to this. One, you're a JUCO football player in Orange County, California, doing security at a festival in Vegas. All right, we know what this is going to turn into if you get any spark, anything like this. It's a money grab. All right, not tripping because Zeke put himself in that position. But when you look at this, the first law of nature is self-preservation, brother. Ain't to fight. It's to say, hold on, how am I going to get out of this situation? You don't fall down off of that kind of context. That's no. What, you, you, when you fall down, you're putting yourself in more harm's way by, by falling, falling down on, on some damn rail than Sean, just saying, I could get out the way. But let's keep it real. Yeah. If someone walks up on you like that, Sean, you have a different reaction. I mean, but, not, but, but look, look how big Sean is. No, that's what I'm saying. No, no, what is this dude, this little dude, up against the NFL player that's 240 pounds, What's he supposed Tap to? Tap out, not fall out. That's what he did. He <laughs> tapped out. He did. Uh, uh, he, 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 had, he had so uh. many, he had so many he <laughs> flopping. He flopped for days. He had so many different options to do in that, at that point. This was a money grab situation, no doubt about it. I he mean, realized that. Yep. You seen him when they first touched. He, he didn't move. Mm. He, it clicked into him that, oh, I can get paid. Let me go ahead and take this fall real quick. Take this because when he first walked up on him, he could have moved out the way. He could have put his arm up and said, hey, don't, you know, stop, whatever. He kept going. And 10 seconds later, he decided to fall. I'm not saying that's his fault. He just found a way to make himself some money, and now he's pressing but, charges. But, but yeah. I, I'm going to say this. I'm not I, I yeah. wouldn't be going to court if I was Kyle Johnson. But, but I'm at, if somebody is bullying you, what, what are you supposed to do? I mean, because keep in mind, Zeke is the bad guy here. He is. He created yeah. this opportunity for, oh, you tried to bully me? Well, I'm going to bully you in the best way that and I can. You, you know he what can't I don't like? physically bully. Yeah, yeah. Financially, yeah. he can. You know what I don't like? <laughs> I guess I get it. I, I guess to it. every player that may watch this is when you go out and you're in a different city, hire security because you're going to spend less on security than you do for an attorney. Thank you. Like, hire security. Yeah. yeah. So now you're spending thousands on an attorney when you could spend maybe a thousand mm. with security, and that's great security. And like, it's costing you it. millions on a contract. Mm. Yes. <laughs> you want to party like a football star? You know it. Well, Saturday at the one and only Dre's Beach Club on the Las Vegas Strip, you can join Ty Dolla Sign, that dude, Marcellus Wiley, mm. and the entire Speak for Yourself crew at the pool party of the summer. For tickets or more information, visit Dre'sGroup.com. You don't want these problems, right? <laughs> <laughs> they do want these problems. You gotta watch with. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Whitlock and Wiley, <laughs> TJ Houston, and Sean Merriman are back. Let's move to Cleveland. Oh, man. Where Baker Mayfield is looking to build on a strong rookie campaign that gave Browns fans their first hope in years. In a new profile by Mina Keems of ESPN, the outspoken quarterback addressed his many public feuds with doubters and critics like former coach Hugh Jackson and our boy Colin Cowherd saying, quote, there comes a time when I'm going to have to block that out You've got to find your own motivation. All right, you guys believe right move for Baker to change his motivation. I think it's smart to change. Um, this is a guy who likes to stir the pot, but as a franchise quarterback, uh, a term he loathes, he really doesn't want to be termed that, but he's now starting to embrace what that means as one of the faces of the league. When you stir that pot, you got to realize what you're stirring is for everybody to eat. And some players don't want the pot stirred. There are some kind of mindsets in that locker room. They don't want all the noise and smoke. They just came here to ball out. 
They don't want all the issues and the distractions and the things that motivated you fully. It's not the same thing that's going to work for them. So as being a leader of a team, knowing that they really have contending aspirations, it's time to chill out. Get your motivation somewhere else. I, I don't like it. You don't? I don't like it. I, I want, I, don't change. You know, Baker, don't change. Because that's what got him to this point. If you look at his history and what he's come, where he's come from, what he's had to do to, to even get into college, the, his college career and all the talks and everything walked he had. Walked on twice. Walked on twice. He's where he's at because of everyone talking to him, overcoming everything that everyone has always said about him. So if that was your motivation to get there, that should be your motivation to keep going. You know, the, the guys in the locker room are going to feed off of your energy, and his energy is always, I'm going to prove you wrong. I wouldn't stop that now. I would keep going. If that, have that to fuel you for 10 to 15 years. We talked about some of the greatest players, Kobe and all these, you know, players who just convinced themselves every single time they stepped on the court or a guy to step on the football field that they have somebody against them. I got to overcome this. That's his personality, and his team is going to feed off of it, and they're going to need it. He can still, <clears throat> excuse me, he, he can still use this as his motivation. He just doesn't have to lash out publicly with it. Because mm -hmm. if you read what he's, there comes a time when I'm going to have to block it out. You're never going to block <coughs> it out because that's who he is. He can try. Yeah. He's never going to let, that's, that's his DNA. That's how he's wired. Now, just don't come outwardly with it and say, oh, Colin Coward is a clown. Yeah. I mean, you can think that. That can still be your motivation. But you don't have to outwardly say that. He's not going to change. That's who he is. And that's why he's in a position he's in is because, oh, I had to walk on. Y'all didn't think I was good enough. I'm going to prove it to you. Oh, y'all didn't think I was good enough to be the first pick. All right, here you go. Oh, y'all didn't think I can play. I shouldn't have been the first pick. Look what I did as a rookie. Use that as motivation. You just don't have to outwardly say it and show it. TJ, you, you made my point exactly, and I agree with you and Sean in terms of I think it would be a mistake to change. But – you don't have to, because I, I literally, this is a big flaw of mine throughout my 20s, 30s, and 40s. I used to think it was a badge of honor to tell everybody exactly what I thought. Mm. And then I realized it's one of the dumbest things you can do. You can't tell everybody exactly what you think. So he can keep this motivation. It's just how he channels it, funnels it, and uses it is the key. And so I got rabbit ears just like this dude. I, I pay attention to everything that's said. I finally have figured out, and it used to serve me well as a journalist. Like, mm. man, Whitlock's the most honest dude on, in, in the history of newspapers. And then I realized, well, that, that's not always the greatest thing. Letting everybody know exactly what you feel about everything, it's not smart. And yeah. so he's got to be smarter. Uh, look, Grandma told me a long time ago, don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. So think about it. Like, everything I'm thinking, uh, it's over here, not for you. And I, I like him changing it. Now, we could get into an argument if it's just privately or not, but he's going to make a change, regardless of if it's just privately or not. You're not going to see the same Baker Mayfield in terms of makeup. And that's so smart. It shows his growth. It shows his maturity, his evolution. You can't play the same song and expect the same results. I love when I hear a narrative, everyone's like, ah, I did it for the naysayers. You a damn lie. It's a good story to say, but ain't nobody getting out of the bed because somebody hates them. You get out of bed because you love what you're going to do. And then when That's you're true. finished, when you finish, you can sit there and point at people and be like, I told you so. But Baker is no longer the walk on at a college. He's the number one overall pick for a franchise and quickly become the face of that franchise and one of the faces of the NFL. I'm a DJ. You can't play the same song over and over again. That dance floor will thin out. They walking his, out. His yeah. motivation will start to thin. You have to reinvent your motivation and reinvent the way you're going to do it. Yeah, but why, you know, if I was them, why change? Right? That's who they drafted. They drafted him because they, he had this attitude. They knew that. Nah. He, no, I'm, what, what, what else you draft? They Baker drafted number one. He, yeah, he can game. throw the ball. He He's a hell yeah, of a he competitor. Can, he can play, but also, when I talked about earlier, look at the characters and the personalities and the confident guys they brought in this locker room. This whole team is built now on guys like Baker Mayfield. You brought in Odell. You brought in Juice Landry. You brought in Kareem. You brought in attitude in this locker room. Why would you change at this point? Because you can keep that attitude in the locker room, but it can stay in the locker room. Right. Again, th th that's what I think. It's like he can get in the locker room, man, Colin Cowherd <laughs> and Whitlock think we ain't going to do this or mm. do that, mm. blah, 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 blah. But he doesn't have to go on Twitter and every place else and ha conduct public feuds. We all mature. Yeah. We all mature as we age and we get smarter. And what you, you react to things differently in your 20s, 30s, and 40s, and 50s, or whatever it may be. 
he's going to mature, so of course he's going to change, but that part in him is not going to change as long as what I said earlier. I'm not going to say anything, but that's going to be in the back of my mind that <laughs> whatever you said about me, and it's what you said. I might not even say, look at me, but I'm going to just do an interview and just let you know mm -hmm. I know what you said. I heard that. And you know who I'm talking to. And yeah. so little things like that, that's, you have to have that type of motivation, but... If you don't have the motivation to be great, it, it doesn't matter. So you're doing it for yourself so right. that you can show people that doubt you. Uh-huh, here you and go. And that's why I wanted to make sure that we know in priority it's for you and your love, not for no naysayers and the hate. People always love that story as If fans. it's for everybody else, you, you're not going to make it. Gonna it's going to die it. down. Not that do flame it is going to burn out. Exactly. And you know who comes to mind? Jim Harbaugh. In the sense of the story of Jim Harbaugh, People said that story works better in college than it does in the pros. He could burn through the college players and the turnover, and you just could, you don't become white noise. It reminds me of the Baker Mayfield. Like, if you come in here with all that angst and all that, I'm going to get you, it's, it works for a minute, and then if you don't have that turnover in that locker room, you got veterans in there, you got grown men in there, they ain't trying to hear all that smoke all day. They trying to go get to the work. I, I think you're making an excellent point, Marcellus, in terms of, Hey, Baker Mayfield in college, and college football is great and it's fine, but that's a nice little story mm -hmm. in college. That's a local story. Now you come to the NFL and all your feuds are a national story and, and they become issues where your teammates have to, they have to answer questions about it as well. So I think the Browns organization is like, hey, Bake, man, we love the fire, the passion, yeah. the, 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 and all that. But we don't want to be drowned in your smoke. There's a bunch of other guys in this locker room. In college, you were so much better than everybody else, but we got Odell Beckham Jr. now. And if you start stirring up all this smoke, Odell's personality is like, well, let me start a fire. <laughs> and now it becomes a competition of guys starting fire. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Speak for Yourself. <laughs> the most fun you can have talking sports. Whitlock and Wiley, TJ Husmanzada, and Sean Merriman are back. We're nice. Time to get antisocial. Yeah. Our man Darnell. Uh, What's going on, uh, y'all? Repping That's Kobe Bryant, the, I see. The GOAT, the best player I've ever seen with my eyes. <laughs> Say it again? The greatest player I've ever seen with my Thank eyes. Thank you. Yeah, that, I agree with I that. I didn't grow up on Jordan. Hey, you're blind, but I go agree ahead. with that. <laughs> <laughs> What? All right, what's popping in them Twitter streets? Yes, sir. We're going to start with something that's been trending all over the internet, trending. Face App Challenge. Mm. Everyone online oh. has been using this Face App to post <laughs> older looking pictures of themselves. Sierra! So. <laughs> right. <laughs> I thought these pictures of the NFL players were hilarious. Who was that? Aaron Rodgers reminded me of an old Brett Favre in his last couple years. And <laughs> JJ, With the TB12. Oh, my man. <laughs> Brady might <laughs> still be playing when he looks like this. Yeah, right. Uh, TJ and Sean wow. look the oh, oh, man. man. I, I look like I'm looking for my teeth right you now. You do. <laughs> <Like, laughs> <you're laughs> <laughs> Just, you the real yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> These are my favorite right oh. here, though, man. We're like a Marcellus. Ooh. Marcellus look like Eddie Murray from Life. <laughs> We're like, like Fred Sanford. <laughs> but guys, the real question is, who aged the best? You know what? To me, it looks like they just added fat to my face. <laughs> uh, so I don't even know if that's aging. Right, or right, right. That's not a good sign. <laughs> I hate to say this. Go ahead. I hate to say this. Go ahead. Keep it real. Marce uh, Marcellus, I'm going to pay you a compliment I here. I'm listening. You... you that looks like an older Idris Elba. Oh, yeah. ooh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm looks like an older Idris Elba. Ooh, that black don't crack. So uh, that you, you, you look boy. like Mr. Ben on the Rice Man. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Roundtree looking. Uh, Sean, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real here. Oh yeah, yeah no, my bad. You look like O.J. Simpson, man. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wow. Look like usually <laughs> Sunday. Sunday at the Vegas. I look like I pulled my teeth out before I start my dentist now. <laughs> but stop, grab the dentures. TJ, out. I got nothing funny to say yeah. about your man. You look like you can still play. <laughs> <laughs> That's how TJ really gonna look. <laughs> One more year. One more year. Oh, man. Got TJ for real. All right. Oh, man. Next. Oh, bust All right, man. <laughs> All right. Moving All right. on to the NFL, where rumors are still out there that Rob Gronkowski may be considering making a return to the field. We know he recently worked out with Brady, running routes and catching some passes. Yeah. But now a source close to Gronk says there's a 40% chance he comes out of retirement. So, guys, what percentage do you give a Gronk return? Mm. When I hear 40%, that's 90% to me. Exactly. <laughs> right. That means he's playing. Right. I ain't never had a friend that walked around and said, hey, you know, Marcel's 40% chance of doing something. Like, that ain't even the real thing right there. I did see him in the celeb game last week. 
He's staying active, more active than usually when a guy's retired. We all know the former NFL player hey, gets big and fat. And then this guy ain't getting big and fat. This guy is like getting into next level shape and recovering. So I think he's coming back. Playoff push. I think he's coming back and he lost that weight because he's like, hey, I ain't coming back to block. I'm coming back to be a pass catching tight end. Mm. I ain't doing no blocking, no hand in the dirt. Line me up. Like outside. you do everybody else. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, I was always going to say that he was waiting for training camp to be over, four or five games go in, and he come when they really need him. But he's going to be lining up. In he's, the, young. Yeah, he's young. He's young. He's still got a, a lot of time to go If play. Jason Witten is playing football again, there you go. what the hell we think Gronk going to do? Like, Gronk <laughs> going back to play. Marcellus, you just saw him. He still looks like a football player because oh. we saw pictures where he looked really thin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's huge. Like, we all know if you stand next to Gronk, that's a real 6'6". 240, 50. He's lost some, like you said, TJ. But he's active. He's still going after it. But if he's 240, he can easily be a, a receiving tight end. Yeah, no problem. And, and I think he wants, I think this is really just a, a game plan. He was tapped out. He got put into a different position, yeah. run block and tight end, and he was beat up. You needed a red shirt year. He's going to get his red shirt year, but he'll Locking be back. Locking y'all. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be back. All right, let's talk about the future of football. Legendary kick return specialist Devin Hester posted mm. this video on Instagram oh. of his son, Dre, here, breaking mm. ankles at football camp. Is it Dre? Is <laughs> it <laughs> right? Dre? Looking like his dad did during his days as a Pro Bowl oh return special for the Bears. And he got them neon. The video went viral online along with the video of Gerald McCoy's son. Oh, God, after McCoy told him he needs to look at his coach li Ooh. and listen while he's talking, I think the message was received. Check this out. Mm. It's just like you're not going to do anything. All right, when we say let's go, you need to go. You guys understand me? You guys understand me? Yes. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Job, job. Oh, 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 oh. I think the future of football looks bright. Oh, they, we better handle these <laughs> negotiations properly. These kids about to eat, right? <laughs> that little McCoy boy is hey. next level big. Ooh. And then little Hester a beast, too. I need Devin Hester. You, how old is your son? That boy got feet like a teenager. <laughs> Man. I'm going to tell you he got feet like. I just saw some video of Barry Sanders. Yeah. And that's what that reminded me of. Mm. And look, Devin Hester was great. Yes. But that, to me, is Barry Sanders like footwork. Mm. He's clearly had his son oh. in ballet or something. Oh, yeah, for real. Are you, are, are you embarrassed as a parent if, you, if, you, if your kid out there getting shook like that? Man. <laughs> I know, yeah. most, I know yeah. most parents are, but you know, yeah. um, my son ain't no slouch Jesus. <laughs> 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 Come on, little man. Where little man video at? Watch your boy. Watch the first oh. thing. Hey, 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 hey. Yo, get out there, stands and get that quarterback. Oh, you got to hold him. Yeah, he got no hands, though. That first step is for your life. Right here. <laughs> Look at this combine drill right here. Look. Elko. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. Elko Hilton. drill. Look at that. 4.34. <laughs> Look at him. Sean, no, we all got sons that play, man. Yeah, no. man. Yeah. My son got a soccer game today. He on a four-game streak of scoring a goal every game. Mm. Mm. Lighting them up. Every game. Can't it's great, man. It. It's great. Osmosis going on here. Yeah. He's got to spread I, it to the little ones. I, Marcellus, you're already doing some. How involved with you are with training your kid? I was I was coaching my son this weekend mm. in, in San Diego, so <laughs> I'm, I'm on him. And he he looked at me and he can't he can't stand. He's like, oh man, could you just go over to the younger kids? The other, <laughs> I don't want my dad over here because I'm on him. I'm on him. When, when I train my guys, um, my NFL guys, I'll bring him out just to watch. Yeah. So he'll sit there. Sometimes he'll hop in with them, yep. and sometimes he'll just sit there and watch. Unreal. And so just get the visual of it, that, that's what I want. That work ethic. And then, you, I mean, the genetics, the DNA is a lot it's of there. it. It's there. But then them just to see it, just to see the work habits that are necessary to go there. But don't pressure them. Like, go where you want. I'm building an athlete up and then unleash you on the sport, whatever sport you choose. But right now, you're going to know how daddy did it, and it was good. <laughs> All right, time now for Darnell's <laughs> question of the day. Boy, All right, take it me. away. All right, guys, so... Most of you guys know I'm a Christian, right? All right. Yeah. And, I'm, you know, we're headed to Vegas this weekend. Yes, we are. My <laughs> first trip to Sin City, actually. Never Ooh. been before. Ooh. And I was a little concerned of, you know, how a faith-based person like myself mm. can have a good time without having a guilty conscience. I wanted to ask you all, what advice would you give me for my first trip? Mm. I, Sean's got the most expertise. So. <laughs> yes, you uh, do. Well, <laughs> yes, lights out section. Keep it real. <laughs> go to the right. Go to the right. Honestly... <laughs> Jesus take the wheel. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Hey, hey. Oh, you are no. done. Listen, listen, man. You are done. It's a wrap. Listen, it don't matter where you go. 
If you conduct yourself with integrity and be who you are, you can go anywhere. It don't matter. It don't matter where you at. Yeah. You're gonna have fun, whether it's Vegas, Indian, it don't matter where it's at. It's where you at. And so you conduct yourself the right way, you good. Yeah, what's the old saying? Everywhere you go, there you are. So you know what? We party before in LA. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. let Vegas, the term, the city, hype you up like, oh my God, it's gonna be crazy. I will say this. Just don't be with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stay away from the I will say this. Whatever you got is your armor. Yeah. Okay, in LA, it might get hit 10 times. You're like, I'm good. Bah, bah, bah. Robocop. Boom, boom. <laughs> you go to Vegas. <laughs> you go. Stay composed. Yeah. I will advise you on your first trip. Do not drink alcohol. Uh, it's a marathon. It's a, it's a <laughs> marathon. <laughs> and you won't lose your senses and do some yeah, things. Yeah, y'all need to quit do. lying to this boy. Vegas is the ultimate test. And uh, I thought Brazil was. Yeah. So I'm gonna let you know. <laughs> be prepared to flunk it. Uh, <laughs> that might be undefeated. Undefeated. So, it is never lost. What, what I would suggest is a lot of prayer. Uh, <laughs> you know, and I would suggest as a first timer, I'm saying keep keep about ten feet between yourself and Sean Merritt. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going. I've never told this story, and, and this is a true real life story. About oh, ten man. years ago, uh -oh. I'm out in Vegas. Uh, I'm staying at the MGM. I got my friend there from Northern California. Uh, some of her friends from Northern California were also in Las Vegas. Mm. And so, you know, look, man, it, it don't matter the city for me. The last 10 years, oh, I'm in bed by 10 o'clock. I don't care what city I'm in. Mm. I'm a day partier, okay. and then I'm in bed by 10 o'clock. All right. This young lady was from Northern California. You know, the, the, there is no clock. She, <laughs> yeah. she just goes. Yeah, yeah. And, and so. I'm in bed at 10, she rolls in at 5 in the morning. 5 in the morning. <laughs> Where you been? Oh, we were at Sean Merriman's suite. Ah! <laughs> I just rolled over and went hey. back to sleep. <laughs> you might as well go right on back. <laughs> hey, baby, hit the shower. <laughs> oh, y'all stupid. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, God. That's a true like story. We about, we about to go back out because we heard him going back to the pool. <laughs> oh, That's a true story. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. You better play up. <laughs> Joined now by Fox NBA analyst Katino Mobley. All right, let's move to the NBA, where agent Rich Paul and forward Marcus Morris have reportedly parted ways after a tumultuous free agency period for the former Celtic. Morris reneged on a two-year deal with the Spurs before signing a one-year $15 million deal with the Knicks. But before that, he reportedly was offered and turned down mm. a three-year $41 million deal with the Clippers who just happened to be the crosstown rivals of Paul's top client, LeBron James. I'm of the opinion, the New York Daily News <coughs> reported this, that part of the rift or him not signing with uh, the Clippers is why the Clippers moved on to Mo Harkless. I'm of the opinion Ooh. that uh, you put Marcus Morris, who just had his best season of his career, mm -hmm. on this Clippers bench, and it's a wrap. That's an 82-game win team, in my opinion. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Rich Paul and, and, and LeBron James wanted any part of that. Man, good conspiracy theory. It's <laughs> uh, a good one, ain't it? Yeah, I hate to be the I guy like to, to debunk it, especially when I'm a Clippers fan. Uh, but I disagree with you and this conspiracy theory. But It's because of timeline. OK, this is Marcus Morris, who outperformed his contract and his uh, situation in Boston looking to get paid, right? Mm. Clippers offer him three years, 41 million. 13 now, a year. Now, 13 a year. At that time, the Clippers were without Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. So take a deal, the first deal, which can be seen in your aspirations as a haircut mm -hmm. when that's not a championship team just yet. Because mm -hmm. like you said, on the bench, not the cherry on top that they were want wanting in Kawhi. <sighs> I don't know. So I can understand why he actually turned that deal down. But then you go to San Antonio, and while you're in San Antonio, two years, 20. That's 10 million. Wait, I'm going the wrong way in terms of mm -hmm. annual salary. Mm -hmm. Now your agent, who was there to forecast, not just react, 
didn't properly forecast that the Knicks would all of a sudden open up some cap space mm -hmm. for a $15 million salary, but for one year. Mm -hmm. Marcus Morris realizes, one, that's the most annual money I can get out of any team, but two, what's going to happen next year in free agency? And I'm going to show y'all right here, free agency 2020. This year, seven All-Stars were free agents. Next year, only two. And let's be real, probably only one, because Anthony Davis is not going anywhere. And maybe zero, because Kyle Lowry's not going to go anywhere with Toronto and his love there. So all that said, I think he came to a different calculation than his agent, who didn't properly forecast it. And that's the reason why they're going to go their different ways. I agree. I, ju I think it is a time difference. Uh, when the Clippers offered him that money, they didn't have what they had have now. Mm -hmm. uh, two is, sometimes when you overthink, right, you wrong. Because once the Clippers, that, that deal was off the table, now you got to think about when does the Spurs offer him his, their deal? Because they're signing guys as well. And when did the Knicks offer him that one-year $15 million deal? So could he have said that? Could he say, you know what? I'm going to do the Knicks for 15. Was that offered in the beginning of free agency, J uh, July 1st to him? It wasn't reported. I, this but that's my point. Right, I don't wasn't. know. I don't know. But now you find Rich Paul. Why are you finding Rich Paul? All speculation. Now, I don't know if it's, oh, bec because the Clippers team is the best defensive team in the league. Maybe the best defense team ever, especially if you get that kid. Mm. Because yeah. now you have all those defensive guys. You got one, two, and three that can guard LeBron. You really truthfully don't need him. But an, a, an, another addition to have him to be guarding LeBron to stop LeBron would be even better. Yeah. Take it a step farther, right? For Marcus, you're 29 years old. If you sign that three-year deal with the Clippers, you'll be about 32. So are they going to give you a long-term deal after that? Mm. I would bet on it, right? I would bet on that. If I'm going with the Knicks, you may can get hurt in that, you know, team that's not that good. Mm. But I'm going to get my 15 right now. I don't want to do that. He's not a type of player that if he goes on a team, the team's that much better. He's not a star like that. But he's really great with a really good team. So I'm, for, for me, if I was him, I'm going to a team that's really good so I can fit my pieces in. So now my, after my two-year deal with the Spurs or my three-year deal with they, my worth, right, subconsciously in, in, in my perception. you got championship worth. You, you, exactly. You're seeing exactly. This as a better David West yes. at 32 yes. on exactly. a championship team exactly. that we're paying for. And so I, I think regardless of whether – it was a conspiracy off the top. Mm -hmm. In the rear view mirror, if I'm Marcus Morris and I'm looking at Rich Paul, he, he's like the guy that handles your money. And, and you pay him for his projections mm -hmm. to be right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, Forecast. So, and so if they're forecasting, nah, this Clippers deal, we can do better. Better. And th no, we didn't. And not only that, you didn't properly forecast that they were going to end up with Kawhi. Mm. And that I could be sitting there with the Mo Harkless deal, three years, mm. win some championships, in LA. put that shine on me in mm. L.A. And, Katino, I know you know the Morris twins. Mm -hmm. I covered them in college. Yeah, yeah. These kids have, young men have developed to me into glue guys. Now, to check this one out. What I think what happened was that 341, you said he coming off his best season. Mm -hmm. Everybody in Philly, his brother, everybody saying, yo, you can get more than 41. Yeah. Come on, man. You was the, you was the most solid one on the Boston Celtics. Yeah. Could have been that. Yep. Coutinho, though. Coutinho, just think it through, man. These guys have been in the league eight, nine years. Right. They've made good money. Uh -huh. They know. They're smart yeah, but enough. you see what money they're giving people now? Right. So for him, he's saying, I'm, all the top guys, I'm either playing just as well as them when I guard them or not. I, 41, no. Give me like six. Coutinho, I do know... Obviously, everybody's driven by money. Mm -hmm. But the Morris twins, I don't think that's their primary motivation, particularly at their age. These guys are cut a little different mentally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Family over everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they have a philo I think they're smart enough to know, like, if I put some championship shine on me, yeah. that's going to last a lifetime. That's going to make me money even when my career is over. If I'm seen as a guy that came there and helped the Clippers mm -hmm. win titles, he can eat off, make money off that mm -hmm. well past the end of his career. Here's a level that I subscribe to that we all should consider. I think Rich Paul properly hyped him up to think that 
you can get a lot in this free agency class when he was available. Mm -hmm. And then that three-year 41 did land where, is that all I can get? Right. Let me just go and see what else is out there. And then he quickly realized when he was in the San Antonio situation that I need to get to free agency next year and get removed from Rich Paul because why? This fiasco, if he doesn't remove himself from Rich Paul, is on him. If you separate Rich Paul, then every general manager out there says, oh, yeah, Rich does have a little issue with that. The whole Anthony Davis situation, how that played out, a lot of that fell on him. So this is a way to separate yourself from the mess it, and still get that money next year. That is true. And check this one out. When I had my agents, right, I was one of the top guys. Me, KG, uh, Chauncey Billups, we were the top guys. So he paid, our agent paid attention mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. Right, first. Say it. Now, after I've all this fiasco with AD and everybody else that Rich got, now you not a bottom feeder, but you in the middle. Yeah. So now you're not the priority. There and you that's go. and again. And it could have been that. You can remove that from the NBA to our business. Yeah. To anytime you have representation, mm -hmm. you better make damn sure yeah. your priorities first. are at the top of their priorities. Yeah. Because if it's not. That's how you can start out, damn, looking in the rear view. I could have been on a championship team three years 41. Instead, I'm with the Knicks one year 15. Yeah, I can get I can get two percent from I can get two percent from this guy if he signed a hundred and something million dollars. Or I'm gonna get two percent from this guy. He signed it. Or if I represent LeBron James and there's a war and put, I'm already in a war with the Clippers. This is before anything happened. If if the Clippers have Marcus Morris off top. Mm. That makes it even more attractive for Kawhi right, and right. Paul George. Yeah. Yeah. And Marcus Morris' reputation is, whether it's true or not, he's a LeBron stopper. Who wants a LeBron stopper inside Staples Center? Mm. Not LeBron? Right. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Whitlock and Wiley, TJ Hushmanzada and Sean Merriman are back. Let's return to Dallas where Jerry Jones and the Cowboys are trying to finish a massive new deal with Dak Prescott, with one for Amari Cooper expected to follow. Meanwhile, Ezekiel Elliott is considering a holdout to get a new deal for himself, and reportedly negotiations with Zeke could go sideways quickly. Question here is, will money issues damage the chemistry inside the Cowboys locker room? And I could definitely see that sidetracking this football team and being an issue. I think we saw it last year with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Obviously, Le'Veon Bell set out the entire season. A.B. Hmm. Uh, had some issues over money, and the Pittsburgh Steelers didn't make the playoffs. I could see it being an issue in Dallas. Yeah, I don't see it in Dallas because these are young players who are outperforming their deals, so they know the future is bright. All they got to do is just keep walking to the sun, just keep walking, keep balling, keep doing what you're doing. I remember when I was in this same situation, I was like, I'm about a year away from getting a deal. And I remember they went to my teammate and they gave him a restructured deal. And I said, don't take it, man. We're a year away. Just wait. He's like, nah, man, it's too much money. I'm killing it if I get this deal. And I said, but it's still under what you're going to get if you wait a year. And the thing about it is, if you're 23 years old, I did this calculation. I was like, I made 23 years in my life. 21 of them, I was broke. Now I got two years, I got a little money, but boy, in a year, it's coming. I'm patient in those moments. I think your mindset is different, as you said yesterday. When you made your money, you either get chill, like, oh, go ahead, Junior, say out of me. Go ahead, make more money than me. I don't care if you're not better than me. Or you get greedy, because like, I want to eat too if they're giving it all to these young bucks who don't deserve it. This young group is going to stay together, and they're just going to keep walking to their money. You know, I think because of Ezekiel Elliott's off-the-field stuff that he's been having, there shouldn't be a problem. If he, you know, kind of kept his nose clean, he didn't have those problems, then, yeah, I would be walking in the, in, the, in the locker room saying, you give Dak $32 million and I'm making, what, 3 or $4 million, whatever he's making this year? Mm. Okay, I'm trying to get paid. I'm the best player on the team, and I want to get paid. But now he's kind of shot himself in the foot. He's, he's kind of done his, he, you know, he's done himself in. So he can't go and ask for the money right now, even though he probably does deserve it. He can't particularly go upstairs and knock on Jerry Jones' door right now. If he wait a year, no problems, anything like that, and, that, and they, then they did give Dak that $32 million that, he's, that they're talking about giving him, mm -hmm. then there's, now, you become, now it becomes a big problem. It's not going to be a problem. If, if Ezekiel Elliott holds out, mm -hmm. that can be a problem. And, it, and it's about money, but that, that could be a problem for the team because it could affect the performance. It's what you said, they're young. But what happens is this. If guys get deals before camp, 
the guys that didn't get the deals are going to be like, man, I wonder when mine's coming. <laughs> like, you, you're going to get on the phone with, with your parents or your brother or your agent, like, bro, they just signed uh, Mario Cooper, Byron Jones. You think I'm going to get mine? What was, what, have you talking to him? Mm. And, and so it will affect them, but you just got to go play because you're young. If you don't have a career in the injury, which pretty much that's really non-existent nowadays, yeah. you're going to get your money eventually. You just have to bide your time. But if Ezekiel Elliott holds out, yeah. it's going to affect the locker room because it's going to affect the performance of the team. I, I just think this is a very unique situation because of Dak. It's it's very. We've seen quarterbacks get overpaid, generally speaking, leaving their team. You know, hmm. I remember years ago Scott Mitchell had a couple good games in Miami and then went to Detroit and got paid. And uh, who was it, Matt Flynn or whatever that flamed out with the Green Bay Packers? Went to Seattle, yeah, Seattle, and or wherever hmm. flamed out. Yeah. We we've seen, but when a guy who some people in the locker room think he don't really deserve it gets overpaid on his current team, I just think, and again, we've got a bunch of young guys that haven't made a bunch of money and a bunch of talented guys. I just think that envy sets off in a locker room, and it can be an issue. You know, you made an interesting point, and I, I don't have the reference of the guy who stayed overpaid and cast was like, really? Uh, but I do know what you said about the holdout. If Zeke holds out, Dak is going to lose his mind because, one, I just got... It affects quote, his performance. I just got overpaid, and now I need you, and you're not there. I see how that will untangle... But how, but how can you know, how can he? If, you, if you're the one requesting a 30 plus million dollar a year contract, why are you worried about Zeke? I, I never... Because you, 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 you benefit you from him being behind yeah, you. Yeah, I get that, but you, Aaron Rodgers, no running back, no big wide receiver. Did you see him coming out and complaining? Well, hey, we need a running back. If you're, if you're going to sit up there, if you're Dak Prescott and you're asking for a $32 million contract, you don't care. You know what I mean? I'm just, it's not as, as poor, important because you're asking for... Uh, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers type of contract. I think care. You care, but you I care, but you want to get yours. I think, you care. I think that yeah. the challenge will be issued to Dak, and he may accept it. I'm not saying which way he lands. Either he's going to freak out mentally, play it off for us, because no Zeke, or he's going to be like, oh, now I can show you I ain't overpaid. No Zeke, and I still go make this offense roll? That's a great challenge to answer. And I think there's a lot of defensive coordinators who are going to cut off this little tape and send it to Dak Prescott and say, Listen to Marcellus. Go out and prove you don't need Zeke. Go out and put it all on your shoulders <laughs> and do more, and Dak. That's what we want. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what they're going to send a limo. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> a limo. <laughs> to make sure Dak shows up and to make sure Zeke stays home. Yeah. And Dak, you go out and show him. Right. Throw the ball 40, 50 times. Yeah. And I, I just, I, I'm just, because I'm sitting here trying to beat my brains, trying to think of the, the, the kind of average quarterback who got overpaid. Because, yeah. again, Washington wouldn't do it with Kirk Cousins. Right. They just refused. Franchise, franchise, we're not going to do it. Because they wanted Blake to avoid Bortles? that little... Not yeah. over there. Yeah. 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 That part. And it Jaylen blew Ramsey, up. They basically... Boy, he, and it come. blew up the team. Did it blow up the team? Or it he did. just wasn't good? Because they, <laughs> went, <laughs> they went really far, and then the next year it was just like... But the whole defense right. hated them. But and they that, did. And that was it, their excuse. And what Dak made it Prescott worse, he never did anything. Than Blake and that's, is. Just, that's the same thing with Dak Prescott. We, we've, all, we're, we've already seen Dak Prescott at his best, in my opinion. They've already seen him plateau. They know what they have. What? I, I, no, I don't no, no, no. Sean. Hey. Plateau? No, I'm I just saying, you don't remember saying, young Sean, Russell huh? Wilson? <laughs> no, no, no. Young I'm Russell saying, Wilson? I'm just no. saying, ben you, can get, you can get better, you can get what? smarter, you can make better decisions, but I think the Cow Dallas Cowboys already know that Dak no. Prescott is not going to be an elite Man, we no. got to say these. We no. got to say these, Clippers. Elite. Yeah. So why would, you know, if I'm them, if I'm them, what, why would I offer wrong? $32 million what right now? When, when, when you say elite, elite, there's very few that are elite but, but you're about to pay him elite money. Young Roethlisberger wasn't elite. Elite and he turned into elite. Young Russell Wilson wasn't elite. Here we go elite, again. Buddy. Uncle Jimmy's here. Mm. Oh, definitely. Most uh, definitely. Oh. Oh, you got oh, some yeah. early thoughts, uh, Uncle Jimmy? Man, you. Hey, man, I got a lot of respect for you, man. Huh? It, 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 ta it take a heck of a man to sit up here and tell that story. Or well, excuse me, it take a big dummy <laughs> to sit up here and tell a story talking about. 
I'm normally in bed by 10, <laughs> but my woman went, came back home at 5. I said, baby, where you been? <laughs> she said, I've been with Sean Merriman. <laughs> you didn't tell him how you curled back up like this <laughs> and just pulled the cover back up to my baby, just turned the light off. <laughs> Lights out. Lights oh, out. man. <laughs> you know that, hey, he didn't say nothing else about it. I ain't never heard that woman's name again. <laughs> It was lights out. Man. I don't know the name, but I'm that not giving it up. All right, oh, uh, Uncle dummy. Jimmy, we're going to have you evaluate <laughs> Darnell Smith here, who had an interesting wow. question of the day about his first trip to Las Vegas. Here's a highlight from our discussion. I will <laughs> advise you on your first trip, do not drink alcohol. Uh, it's a marathon. It's a, it's <laughs> it's a marathon. marathon. <laughs> and you won't lose your senses and do some yeah, things. Yeah, y'all need to quit do. lying. What I would suggest is a lot of prayer. <laughs> uh, you know, and I would suggest <laughs> as a first timer, I'm saying keep, keep about 10 feet between yourself and Sean Merritt. <laughs> 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 All right, so we're all going to Las Vegas this weekend for a yes. big party at Dre's Beach Club. Mm. You got any advice for uh, Darnell? Well, it didn't sound like 10 feet was enough for you. So. <laughs> <laughs> 10 stories, you have 10 any, buildings. <laughs> you have any thoughts or advice for Darnell? Yeah, I'm be honest with y'all, man. I'm, mm. I'm, in, I'm in my feelings a little bit today, man. Mm. You know, okay. I, I, I'm trying to figure out why y'all sit up here and let Darnell use up a whole segment for that question. <laughs> you could have asked Uncle Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, both of y'all sitting up there ain't got three good marriages between y'all. <laughs> Uncle Jimmy got five, <laughs> count them, five successful ex-marriages. <laughs> and I met a little red bone last night, so we could be working on six. <laughs> That's not good. Look, Darnell, bro, you got two choices this weekend. Mm. You can be full and happy or broken angry. <laughs> Hang with me and be full and happy. <laughs> Hang with my nephew and be broken angry. <laughs> Listen here, man. I go to Vegas for the buffets, not the giveaways. <laughs> you know, Uncle Jimmy's a born again hustler. <laughs> you know, I works too hard for my money to be giving it away like that. Mm, oh, no man. gambling for you. You know, huh? hey, I, I go to Vegas to get paid, not like you would go to Vegas and get played. <laughs> See, if you listen to me a little bit more, your stays in Vegas would go a little bit better. <laughs> now you go to Vegas, he want to be a shot, a baller, mm. shot caller. Mm. A wannabe Cardi B bag hauler. <laughs> a whale, huh? Uh. A whale. Hey, man, look, man, Uncle Jimmy been going to Vegas, man, since 64. Mm. You know, that's why I met my first wife, Myrtle. <laughs> what? I met my first wife, Myrtle. We saw Frank Sinatra. We was at the, the, the what was that, the, the Copa Room at the Sands Casino. Man. You saw Frank Sinatra at the Copa Room at the Sands. Yes, yeah. I was the first black blackjack dealer at the Sands <laughs> Casino. <laughs> you ain't okay? never met Frank and Sinatra. Man, look, man, I was, the, I was the first black blackjack dealer, and Myrtle was the cigarette girl. Mm. Oh, hey, man. man, she was something. I'm not going to lie, man. <laughs> Short, voluptuous. <laughs> she was well spoken. She stood about four, 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 five, <laughs> at about 280. <laughs> and man, she walk around the casino, boy, she'd be like, cigarettes, <laughs> beer, <laughs> cotton candy. You know, she had that little club foot, so they called her Myrtle the Turtle. <laughs> you know, she was slow, but she was for sure, you know. You know, she. <laughs> now, what y'all should have did, what y'all should have told a good Christian brother like Darnell, yeah. you should have told, hey, man, you need to take your fiancé. <laughs> That's what Beyonce, you mean. Beyonce, you mean? I know what the hell I said, a fiancé. <laughs> that girl got a good job. Somebody got to feed Darnell. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Earth, Wind, and Fire said. It's all about love. Yeah. You yeah. understand? You go to Vegas to get married. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I done done it twice, and one time, that's what I went there for. <laughs> okay, you know, look at me, let me tell you, I've been disease-free since 1942. <laughs> because I know that you go to Vegas for the shows and not the hoes. <laughs> so, Darnell, you got a choice. You can go with me and go to Buffet, or you can go with my nephew mm. and go to the doctor's office when you get back. <laughs> you can believe that no pain, no gain mess if you want to. <laughs> Uncle Jimmy's trying to save you from a, from a domestic violence attack. 
<laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I done seen your hey. fiance. She gonna whoop that ass to come back. <laughs> we gotta get here's our approval okay, rating for Darnell. I'll bring your yeah. wife. Darnell gonna be all puffed up. Yeah. Job performance really 15, all time <laughs> greatness four. <laughs> Character 21, authenticity 20. Woo. 60. 60? Yeah, role play. Uh, in that world, I got my 64. 23 job performance. He kills it. I ain't gonna lie. From that segment, He's good. the birth of it, he kills it. Uh, all-time greatness, uh, four. Nobody know who you are, Darnell. You're going to find out in Vegas. <laughs> Nobody well, he gonna knows. learn today. <laughs> Overall, 64. He's going to learn. All right, we'll be back Vegas. tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>